of thing. Um, I'll do a separate follow-up video once I get the time to actually fully test it out. I'm still working on getting this cleaned up after that failed attempt. Uh, I've been scraping at it with my screwdriver here. Uh, and it's working fairly well. Um, now, as you can see, the flaps that were here on both sides have been removed. They just kind of tore off as I was cleaning it, but that's okay. I think I want those off anyway because they're going to be in the way when I go to fill this again. Um, I've also cut the rubber stops off the top and the bottom. Um, the reason for that is when you have the polyurethane uh, insert in there, it's going to be thin in the middle here, and then when it presses in, when you go to like accelerate, it's going to want to press out. And I feel it's just going to split that uh, insert in half and shoot it out the sides. Uh, so this will at least guarantee that that insert will be nice and strong. Now, as for using that PL Premium again, I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, it was difficult to work with. Uh, it was hard to smooth out, and I also gave it a, over a week to dry and then baked it in the oven for several hours and it was still wet as you saw. Even the bottom here, I was convinced must be dry because I kept pressing on it and it was pretty solid. But as soon as I poked at it with my screwdriver, uh, it was very wet on the inside, just maybe like uh, less than, less than um, three eighths of an inch in. So I'm gonna use a two part polyurethane mix instead, specifically for motor mounts. I'm gonna put a link to that in the video description below. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish cleaning this up and then wait for that to show up so I can fill it. So I ordered this less than a week ago and it showed up today via FedEx. This is the ADA High Performance Liquid Urethane Base. Uh, yes, the can is dented even though uh, the box was fine. I don't think that's gonna be an issue. Um, and then the activator. So I went with the high performance because it's gonna be tear resistant and heat resistant. And since this is the uh, torque motor mount, you want the tear resistance. And since this is gonna be next to the header, you want the additional heat resistance. Due to the 15 to 20 minute working window with the liquid urethane, I'm going to be doing some shared footage between the video where I fill my stock motor mount and the video where I make uh, polyurethane bushings for my NYPPD motor mount slash Torque Solution clone motor mount. All right, first thing we want to do is apply some contact cement. So I'll apply it to the rubber uh, anywhere where the duct tape is going to touch, uh, nowhere where the polyurethane is going to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it along here, run it along this edge, here, and then right there. Uh, another spot that I'm going to recommend that you put some contact cement is these corners here and here, um, because that's where polyurethane most likely is going to leak out from uh, your tape. And there we go. All right, so I'm gonna do little strips uh, starting from the rubber and out. Because we wanna make sure we've got a nice good seal and then we'll cover it up with one larger piece. But we wanna make sure that there's no way for the polyurethane to leak out. So again, be very careful on these corners here because that's the spot where I feel like there's gonna be leakage. So I'm actually gonna put it close to the edge like that to start. So I can push this down into there. Make sure I get a good seal and then bring it across. So definitely take your time with this part. There we go. So I'm making sure that I'm holding it down right here so that the tape is stuck to the side like that. And then just keep working our way around. Okay, just checking to make sure everything looks good on the other side. Great. Now let's do the top. I'm going to start with these corners first because, again, that's where polyurethane is going to leak out. Just to be on the safe side to make sure the tape is actually stuck alongside here. I'm just going to take a long piece of thin tape right here and then pull it so it's nice and tight all the way around. 
There. Okay, so I think we're good. So I double checked it on the other side, make sure that the tape is uh, secure on all the corners. Make sure you have enough sand in the container so that this will sit in here without this bottoming out and the sand should come up along the sides a little bit because you want it to support um, the weight of the polyurethane which you poured in here. And then take your level and make sure it's straight. So now we'll do it this direction first. Push this side down a little bit. And then do this side. Yeah, perfect. Great. Now all I have to do is mix some polyurethane and pour it in. All right, so now we're going to take the entire contents of this bottle and pour it in. So this will also include the coloring because I chose red. And so make sure you get all of it in there. So they said you should just stir it for about 15 seconds, should be good, but make sure you're getting all around. Then make sure I'm getting all around on the sides. All right, let's start pouring. So be careful not to pour too much in. There we go, that looks good. start raising the can up before it gets too full all right I think that's good it's been about half an hour and this looks great I did keep an eye on it right after I poured it to make sure there weren't any leaks and there weren't uh, but now it's stiff enough that I can just easily pick it up and put it upstairs in the oven to help speed up the curing process the online instructions say to bake this in the oven at 150 degrees for 18 hours. So I would definitely use a little thermometer like this because not all ovens are very accurate, case in point. You can see I've had to remark where 150 and 275 are on here. 18 hours is up, so let's check the results. Alright, so looks good. Nice and solid. So let's take this downstairs, get the tape off, and clean off the sand. I just finished cleaning this off in the sink using a paper towel and Goo Gone. It would have been better if we hadn't run out of Goof Off, which is stronger, but this still did the trick. Um, you can still see some contact cement on here. It's, it was kind of really hard to get off. Uh, any black that you see here is because I actually peeled back the uh, duct tape and redid some of the corners here with electrical tape so that it would stretch into place and then put the duct tape over top. So of course, here's the other side. So it's definitely nice and solid in there. I just happened to notice a little bit of sand right there attached to polyurethane and also right there because there's a little gap right here that I tried to block off with uh, my tape, but it didn't block it off completely, but the sand stopped it from leaking out. So when you put this in your container with sand, make sure that it sits above this little gap here. If you don't know how to swap in the motor mount, I'll include a link above and in the video description below to my two and a half year update for the NYPPD motor mount where I show you exactly how to do that. Um, now I'll, I'll get around to doing part two of this video when I have the chance to actually swap this mount in. I'm currently using the casted bushing that I made um, alongside when I was filming this video uh, for my NYPPD motor mount. And yes, it is functioning great. No problems with it whatsoever. I've been running it for about a month and a half now. Uh, but when the weather gets nicer out and I actually have some time, I'll swap in this mount and then test it out for about a month. I want to make sure that it's not going to you know, have any problems whatsoever. And then I'll do a follow-up video then. Now, I hope this helps you out if you're looking to get a stiffer motor mount for your car and you can't find any aftermarket options. If you haven't hit subscribe to my videos below, please do so now. And as always, thanks for watching.